بركاته قال الله تبارك وتعالى في كتابه العزيز بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم هو الذي أخرجكم من بطون أمهاتكم لا تعلمون شيئا وجعل لكم السمع والأبصار والأفئدة قليلا لعلكم تشكرون صدق الله العظيم سورة النحل الله سبحانه وتعالى says Allah is the one who took you from the wombs of your mothers not knowing anything and he gave you hearing and sight and he gave you hearts remember the heart is the seat of the of the human conscious in other words he gave you hearing and why hearing because when we come out of the wombs of our mothers the first thing we can physically do is hear we can't see yet we first hear and then we see and then as we grow up then eventually we can discern so and we made for you hearing and sight and we gave you intellect in order that you might give thanks now this verse appears in several places in the quran in different ways with different words some added some subtracted but the message is the same at the end la'allakum tashkurun in order that you might give thanks in order that you might be grateful for this hearing for the sight and for these hearts of intellect and consciousness and so something that we take for granted you know hearing the adhan allahu akbar you know to think that brother fakhri musa who just gave the adhan could not hear what he was rendering brother fakhri musa who gave the adhan allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward him he could not hear what he was rendering you and i can't imagine that and in one of the uh, stories i found from our pious predecessors that uh, a man was complaining about his problems and somebody said to him that you know if i to offer you you know 10000 dollars for your eyes for your sight another 10000 for your hearing maybe another 10000 for your hands and 10000 for your legs you know would you sell those to me for those prices i mean said of course not never he said you know you're complaining yet you have all of these faculties and all of these limbs that you wouldn't sell for all the money in the world and yet you complain and yet you are ungrateful allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us of his of his grateful servants amen ya rabbal alamin and it doesn't be of those that are ungrateful when we have something uh, and then we only become grateful in other words we only want to wake up from our state of heedlessness and carelessness once we have lost that favor like ibn at-tailah al-skandari what did he say man lam ya'rif an-ni'am bi wujdaniha arafaha bi fuqdaniha the person that does not recognize allah's favors when they are with them will only recognize allah's favors once they have left them and the other saying he says he says man lam yashkur an-ni'am faqad ta'arrada li zawaliha the person that doesn't give thanks for the favors that allah has blessed them with must get ready to lose those favors wa man shakaraha faqad qayyadaha bi'iqaliha but the one who does give thanks has indeed secured those favors for them and that's where the word baraka comes in ida barakatil iblu you know when a, a camel goes down on all fours i'm telling you you cannot move that camel it's like he's cemented to the ground that's where the word baraka comes from the sitting position of the camel it is secured so may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us of those that are grateful for all the favors that he's bestowed upon us especially for these favors that you know we are sometimes unaware of and we take for granted like being able to hear and that gives me great pleasure to welcome 
the Alwaha Institute for the Deaf uh, to Masjid al Sunni today. We have Dr. Qasim Davit, who is going to be speaking about the awareness of uh, the deaf. And um, as I said, Brother Fakhri Musa, he was the one who rendered the, uh, the Adhan. Uh, he is deaf. And uh, we're going to be having, I think, outside, anybody that would like to uh, contribute to the institute um, must please uh, speak to the people. There's going to be people outside, I think, handing out some pamphlets and giving out some information. Uh, and of course, we're going to have somebody signing uh, for Dr. Qasim uh, David today. And that will be, who will be the person that is signing for us? Abdul Wahid Lakay. Abdul Wahid Lakay, he will be uh, doing the sign language for the khutbah. Something that uh, 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 sadly we are lacking in our masajid is a person that is signing because in fact I know of a number of, of our brothers and sisters from the deaf community or brothers in particular that attend Jumu'ah and they sit there for the 35, 45 minutes and not knowing what has been spoken. So something we need to look into, something we need to make more effort for in order to accommodate our beloved deaf community. So without any further ado, I uh, call on uh, Dr. Qasim David. Hafizullah Ta'ala. Falitafaddal Mashkuran. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa salatu wa salam wa la ashrafi wa mursaleen Sayyidina wa nabiyyana wa maulana Muhammadin sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Wa ala alihi wa ashabi ajma'in Rabbi shrach li sadri wa yasir li amri Wa khlul ugadatam min lisani yafqaw qawli Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh The talk today is to give you a little insight into the lives of the deaf community, in particular the deaf community of Cape Town, inshallah. As you can see, uh, Brother Wahid here, he's uh, doing the interpreting. Uh, he's the only male Muslim interpreter in Cape Town. And for, for this reason, we have to do this awareness, create awareness about the deaf, because as uh, Sheikh said earlier on, they come to the Masajid on a, on a Friday, which is the most important day in the week, but they have no gain when they leave, when they leave here, no benefit, except that benefit that Allah Ta'ala put in their hearts. And the first thing that our wives and our daughters ask us when we come home from Masajid uh, is, what was the lecture about? Now, some of us will fall asleep and say, SubhanAllah, I can't remember. And unfortunately, they have to say, we don't know. Allah knows best. About 37 years ago, my late wife and I, we woke up to the fact that our baby daughter is deaf. There's no deafness in the family, none in, the, in, our, in our group of friends. So we had nowhere to turn. Alhamdulillah, through doctors, etc., we referred to Red Cross where they confirmed. And then we were referred to um, the Carl de Toit Center, which is in Tigerberg. It's attached to the Stellenbosch uh, University. And they then decided on a course of action. And that course of action is that the parents will have to come three times a week to where they teach the parent and the child to verbalize. Now, if you cannot hear the language, you know, children, when they learn language by imitating, they don't know what the meaning is, but they can say mama, papa, you know. And this is a problem for the deaf. After the course with Carl the Toy, they decide whether the child can be mainstreamed, meaning in the mainstream school, 
whether the child has enough hearing to do that or whether the child has to be referred to a special school. Why they call it special, I have no idea, because these people are not special at all. It's just a name to shove them into a corner and then forget about them. But it's nice, it's special. So there's only, in those days, there were only one school, special school available for the deaf, and that is in Witteboma and Weinberg. If the, ch if the school is full, you cannot get the child into a school. So many of the deaf community end up sitting in the back room at home, not being able to, go, to get educated, no access to education. In addition, they have to be transported from all over the greater um, Cape Town area to that school. If the transport is full, the child will have no access to education. In addition to this, in the, in the 1940s, um, a policy of education was decided on that the learning language for the deaf would be verbal or oral um, English or Afrikaans. So if you can't hear the language, how can you grasp what is taught to you? That fa failed policy has persisted until about 15 years ago. They now use what they call total communication. And the reason for this is, is that teachers are not able to sign. They're not being taught to sign. So they can use sign language or oral English or Afrikaans. It means that education is still poor. So 80% of this group of people, the deaf community, they end up being uneducated and basically illiterate. So what happens to them after that? We all know if you want to become a sweeper in ShopRite, you must have a matric certificate. In addition, these special schools are all Catholic schools. So we are unable as a household to teach that particular child um, about our wonderful dean. And there was no facilities available to send him to learn. We can send our, school, our, our children to, to the masjid. We can send them down the road. There's a mu'alima or mu'alim teaching them. But for the deaf, there was nothing. And many of our uh, deaf community uh, has passed on with the incorrect akida. Even those ones that came to, our, to the madrasa, which was established in 1995, when we asked them, do you know who Allah is? They say, yes. I say, can you explain? Then they say, yes. Allah is the same as Jesus, subhanAllah. So this all means that the community, the Muslim community failed them. And I'm not trying to say this to make us feel bad, but it's just a fact. We failed them. The Catholics, they were underground. I mean, the school in Weinberg just celebrated their 95th anniversary. And al waha only stands for 27 years. SubhanAllah. So, the reason for me being here today is to encourage the brothers to find out who this deaf community, who they are, and how we can assist them. al waha is the only madrasa in the Southern Hemisphere. I'm talking about South Africa. Sorry, not the Southern Hemisphere, in South Africa. And we don't know whether there's any in the northern, uh, in northern Africa. The only one. So the madrasa is not enough. If education, are still fa if, if, if the education department is still failing the deaf, then we have to do something about it. How do we aim to do this? First of all, we've been teaching the community sign language for the last seven years on a Saturday at our premises. I just want to stop here for a moment and ask, is there any of the brothers here who communicate 
and is in the presence of uh, a deaf person. No? And that's exactly how difficult it is for them. They are an isolated community. You know, we often hear people talking about doing a 30 days and the 60 days, and we go to India and Pakistan and all of those places to do dawah work. Alhamdulillah, that's fantastic. But there is a deaf community that right here under our noses and they are not getting any of that. So that's very poor of us as a community. I just want to ask you, because this is a, about the insight into our lives of deaf, you see the brother here signing, but it will be difficult to follow him, even if you watch him. You try and figure out what he's saying, because the structure of sign language is different to spoken English. So I just want you to do something for me, inshallah. When we greet, uh, we, this, normally when we greet, we'll just do this, assalamu alaikum. But if we do it in English, we say, peace be with you. Can the brothers just repeat after me, Kanala? Or at least reply to me, peace be with you. Alhamdulillah. So now you know. It's easy. The problem that exists with deaf people is not the fact that they cannot hear you. It's the problem that we cannot communicate with them in their language. Now it's a lot easier for us to learn sign language than it is for them to learn spoken English. Believe me. And I would encourage the brothers to come and find out from us and join us in a sign language class. In addition to this, we also want and we encourage the Masajid across Cape Town. We've partnered up with the Muslim Judicial Council to get youngsters that are studying at the Masjid to come and learn to, to interpret so that we have an interpreter in every single masjid in Cape Town, inshallah. I mean, as al waqa we've been trying to do this, to take an interpreter to the masjid, but I believe there's over 300 masjid, masjid in Cape Town area alone. So we cannot, we cannot provide 30 of them. If at the moment we only have one, but if each masjid does that and train an interpreter, then alhamdulillah we'll be able to reach all the deaf people in, in the Western Cape, inshallah. In addition to this, we also felt that we must make education for the deaf accessible. And for this reason, we have purchased a property in, uh, in Silvertown just opposite Gatesville. And we established a Montessori school, an inclusive Montessori school, open to all. And we feel that if we put a group of hearing uh, learners with deaf learners, those hearing um, learners will learn that the deaf are no different to us. They just speak a different language and they're gonna be treated slightly differently because they can't hear you. So, we started the Montessori school in July last year, and we intend, inshallah, to do primary intake this year, this month, inshallah. And we want to grow that to high school and as well as tertiary, inshallah, in the future. And I'm hoping this will still happen in my lifetime, inshallah. So the, deaf commun the, the Muslim community in Cape Town, they've been supporting the madrasa for ages, alhamdulillah, very well supported. But right now, we need a little bit more than that. It takes a lot to purchase a property and to run that property, uh, run the school. Even just for the madrasa, we have to collect all of the deaf across the wider metropolitan, Cape metropolitan area 
And that costs money as well. So we would encourage the brothers, as Sheikh said earlier on, there's a table outside. Just talk to the, to, um, the al Wahha representatives there and see how you can help. We also need people with skills because the building that we uh, purchased was uh, vandalized badly. So we need people with skills, artisans, to come and assist, and people who have businesses to try and assist financially. We also run a campaign, a debit order campaign at the moment, where we're just asking everybody to contribute 50 rand a month, inshallah. And I think if all of us do that, then we should have no financial worries, I'm sure. The school was also established with the idea and the concept that if we've been running behind the Catholic schools for so long, that we want this one school, it's very difficult for an interpreter to uh, interpret, and he's still learning, to interpret fully for so long. Normally we have two, but they're, only f they're females, and then we swap them around. But, um, you know, it's still a little... You need a break there? No? You good? Alhamdulillah. Uh, it's still a bit difficult to, um, you know, to, to get this done, but we believe that... Yeah, Abdul Wahid, I must tell you, he's married to a deaf lady. al Waha went on a Umrah about... Uh, in 2019, we took 60 deaf people on this Umrah, Alhamdulillah. And 60 hearing people joined us as well. So we was one of the biggest groups, and we were treated royally in the kingdom. I just wish all of you were able to go with us. And maybe, inshallah, we'll do something like that soon. Um, and the reason for that umrah was besides creating the awareness, it was also to establish a connection or to try and establish a connection between Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa and the deaf community. Because they can see what happened in churches. You know, the church is sorted out. They've got interpreters everywhere. And of course, they can have a female interpreter in front. Um, it's still a khilaf if we have a female interpreter at Jumu'ah. So we really need those interpreters. Ma for repeating that. But what I wanted to say is that this school needs to be the pride of the Muslim community, inshallah. And with every penny, with every effort that you put in, it will bring us closer to that goal. I mean, Muslims, we are innovators, right? We've always been in history. We just don't hear about it, but we the innovators. Recently, I traveled to Spain, and you hear the story there about the Khalifa, and you hear the story of, uh, you know, the buildings and so on. And in the 700s, there were street lights. There was running water. Whilst in London, people were still throwing their human waste out in the front in the street. So the Muslims were innovators. And we feel that this is an innovation by the Muslim community. But the only way to achieve that is to get your assistance. So we've always been a charitable um, community. And we are asking for each and every one of you to adopt this year in 2023, to adopt the deaf community as your charity, as your effort, inshallah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Holy Quran, in Surah Rahman, Bismillah Rahman Rahim, فَبِأَيِّ آلَىٰ إِرَبِّكُمَا تُكَذِّبَانِ then which of the favors of your Lord will you deny? If we are thankful for those favors, then we should return those favors. It is said in a hadith that the Prophet Sallallahu said that the best of you are those who are beneficial to mankind. The Muslim community I know in Cape Town, very generous. We support the masajid, um, hip schools, you know, poverty alleviation, pots of foods are made everywhere. And we're not asking you to divert from doing that. We are just asking you to invest in the one and only 
um, madrasa for the deaf and an inclusive school for the deaf, inshallah. Jazakallah khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wa ala amabad. We say jazakum la khairan to a doctor Qasim Tavit and to uh, Abdul Wahid Lakay. Subhanallah. Sometimes we just need a reminder. Fadakir fa inna dhikra tanfa'ul mu'mineen. So remind for verily. The reminder benefits the believer. And inshallah ta'ala, you know we have two ways of giving. The one way is sirran, which is in secret. You know, to give with the right hand that which the left hand doesn't know about. But that's not the only way of giving. You know, four times in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, sirran wa alaniyatan. To give in secret and to also give in open if it is to encourage others to give. So inshallah, I would like to be the first person to put me down for that uh, debit order inshallah. Um, doctor, you said a minimum of 50 rand. For those of us who can afford that and inshallah ta'ala, if you can afford more, you know what to do. But I think, inshallah, and I start with myself, I will put myself down for that 50 rand a month. I mean, if we can pay, you know, subscription fees for this and for that, and how can we not make some effort, inshallah, to help develop these services for the deaf community, bi'idhnillahi ta'ala. Uh, and inshallah, I'm going to speak to the committee. We need to look into finding a, a signer that we will send to you to teach the signing so that inshallah Masjid al-Sunni can be known as the first officially uh, friendly masjid for our deaf brothers and sisters to come and uh, watch the khutbah bi'idhnillahi ta'ala. So again, jazakumullah khairan. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you abundantly for this great effort that you are making in the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, seeking the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cause you to go from strength to strength and help you and aid you in delivering this vital service to those beloved brothers and sisters of ours uh, in the community. Jazakumullah khairan, barakallahu feekum. Wa akhiru da'wana an alhamdulillah rabbil alim. Wa assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I'm not going to 